What's going on, Dan K Show fans? Big week for the Dan K Show. An opportunity to sit down with the commissioner of the USPHL, Bob Turo, to talk Tampa Hub City. We've got interviews, we've got conversation, we've got great hockey, and so much more coming at you on today's Dan K Show. All right, Dan K. Show fans, a lot to do today, a lot to talk about. Let's get right into it. Three things. Thing number one, we are cursed. We are cursed. We are a curse. Forget about the curse of the Bambino. It's the curse of the Dan Bino, apparently, because every time Lucas J. and Dan K. put a Midwest West team at the top of the Midwest West in our power rankings presented by Elite Junior Profiles, things go wrong. I'm sorry to the Minnesota Blue Ox, all the players, everybody. Whoever's next in the Midwest West, we're sorry then too. That'll happen in January. Thing number two, the holiday follow challenge continues right after these three things. We'll unveil the top five standings. Thing number three, man, I can feel my skin getting toasty warm already. I can feel the suntan. I can feel the good vibes and I can see Tampa in the distance, baby. 2021. Tampa Hub City, the best league in all the land, makes the best decisions yet again. Tampa Hub City coming right at you. And with that in mind, I look to my right, I think. Stage right, internet right, whatever you want to call it, for me to be right here. It's my right-hand man. It's my consigliere. It's Mon Frere from another mayor. It is my shirtless, Top Gun scene, beach volleyball playing partner at any point. The goose to my maverick, the Iceman to my jester. Enough with the Top Gun references, Lucas Jones. That's right, Dan. And we will take on anyone in two-on-two volleyball as long as those people are not that good at volleyball. Yeah, if it's Tom Cruise and Goose, Tom Cruise and Goose were good. They like were for good. guys who had to learn how to be fighter pilots, like they were real good at volleyball. Yeah, I think it's it's mostly that like the eyesight and hand eye coordination, and I mean probably the shirtlessness didn't hurt too. Well, they did rock the jeans though. Still an interesting choice there. But what isn't an interesting choice is to vote for the Dan K Show's hashtag Holiday Follow Challenge. And remember. I think last week some people saw the top five and thought, I can only vote for the top five. We had three Mavericks fans vote for the Toledo Cherokee. What were they doing? <laughs> what? Vote for the Mavericks. You can vote for the Mavericks. I will count on your vote for the Mavericks. They can still make it. But the top five right now, as it stands, drum roll, please, Lucas. <laughs> I, good job. Great work on that. You think, I'd, number, be, you think I'd be more prepared with like an actual drum roll? But why? No. Yeah, go for it. This is we're we're going with 1920s radio technology here on the Dan K show still. Lucas, crack, and that's the sound of the bat as it doubles it in the gap. But we will not be broadcasting games like that on hockey TV in Tampa. Number five, the Tampa Bay Juniors jump into the top five for the first time since the start of the competition. Lucas, we could spend a lot of time in Tampa if they win. <laughs> yeah, we might just uh, we might just get a uh, a little beach house, invest in some property down there at this point. Number four, dropping lower than they've been in the history of the competition, the Richmond Generals. But do remember, the last time the Richmond Generals were in third place in this competition was year one of the competition. They came back and won by double the votes of second place. In third place, the Wooster Oilers, Lucas, who want us to come out for Letter Kenny Knight. You betcha. Oh, absolutely. I mean, the, the story behind that rink is incredible. We'd love to be able to get out there and promote the community. And Letter Kenny Knight is a huge plus. I mean, how many trash cans are we going to be able to kick over the course of a broadcast? Oh, every trash can. <laughs> and remember, that's what I appreciate about you uh, fans out there in Wooster. Keep voting, keep voting, keep voting. You can win this thing. At number two, dropping out of the number one spot by two votes. The Florida Junior Blades, two votes, Lucas, just two votes as the Wisconsin Rapids River Kings take over first place. Well, the the River Kings are a tough team. The Florida Junior Blades now have to deal with some adversity. Dan, the, the, the demographics are skewed a little bit. Florida Junior Blades, great on Instagram, struggling on Facebook and Twitter. The Wisconsin Rapids River Kings, the complete opposite. So all these teams now, you're going to have to reach that bag of tricks 
do some canvassing. Florida Junior Blades players, young people don't have Facebook, but you might have to sign up for a Facebook page. I mean, it's not going to be the end of the world. That is an attack at Facebook, and I do not want Mark Zuckerberg or anybody to come after me after that one. But remember, you can also vote one more way. We're allowing one more way here. www.dancashow.com. Go there, contact us with your vote. We're giving you an extra vote. So if you voted already, you can tilt the scales here and go vote at www.dancashow.com. Hashtag holiday follow challenge, the team you want. Keep voting. Keep, keep, keep voting. And with that, Lucas, we go to the commissioner of the USPHL, Bob Turo, who we got the opportunity to talk with this week about Tampa Hub City. Now, if you are watching the Dan K Show, you are here for info on what I am calling the greatest event in USPHL history and and an opportunity right now to not just play the game of hockey and get guys on the ice, but keep the athletes safe. The United States Premier Hockey League is at it again with another incredible opportunity for its athletes. And with that, I introduce him before we start our interview, my right-hand man, my consigliere, Lucas Jones. Lucas, I mean, how excited are you for this this Tampa hub city? I, I couldn't be more excited. I mean, from the moment that we we were told and we found out about this, it's just it's such a good opportunity. There's there's so many different things you can do to just promote how great of an event this is, how great of an experience for the player this is, and you know, at, at least of all, or certainly not least of all, the quality of the hockey that's going to be on the ice every single day, all viewable on hockey TV to scouts across the country. And now I introduce in, I mean, Dan and Lucas can bloviate all day, but we go to the, the brains behind the operation here and a man who is working a 48 hour day now. I, I think it's impossible to do, but he is he has split himself in half. He's in 10 places at once and he is doing it all. It's Commissioner Bob Turrell, the USPHL. Mr. Commissioner, first of all, thank you for joining us. Thank you for having me, guys. And and now we look at this opportunity, right? We we head into the 2021 calendar year. And we've seen the obstacles, the, the, the work that's had to be put in just to have a, a safe season for this first half of the year. And we're starting to get to a position now where there are landlocked states and places where some teams are having trouble filling out that full schedule, right, without the ability to cross borders. Can you talk a little bit about, a little bit about the, the thought process behind the scenes here and how the Tampa Hub City came to fruition? Well, the situation with COVID has changed uh, daily, weekly, monthly. Um, one month, uh, one state is a hot, a hot bed for it, and then it's not, and another state is. And we've always wanted to, uh, we've always wanted to play by the rules as far as what the government goes. We've always wanted a safe environment. But it became very clear that maybe we had to think, uh, and I hate this term, but outside of the box as far as doing something special. And so what we looked at initially for our NCDC division, but then we opened it up to other divisions. We looked at kind of mimicking the greatest league on the face of the earth, the National Hockey League, and doing something special. And we created a number of opportunities. We looked at a number of different locations so that we could do this um, safely uh from an education standpoint make sure that everybody was still able to get their education done and still have the the greatest product on the ice that we possibly could and and we landed just north of tampa in wesley chapel and now we look at this it starts up in 2021 a 44 day period here with the hub what do you expect out of the play so if, if i'm a, if i'm an ncdc player or parent right now what am I expecting if I'm heading down to the Tampa hub out of my, my play schedule, my day-to-day -day life down there in Tampa? So um, first of all, we've taken basically over a resort where um, we basically control the resort right now. And so there's no in and out. Um, a lot of people refer to this as a bubble. It's not a bubble. It's a hub city. It's not like the NHL, but it's a very controlled environment where the players are only going to be leaving um the the uh, the hub city the the, the resort um, just to go play games or to practice, but 
on my day right now, Richard Galant's day, our whole team's day right now is stacked with operations. So I'll just give you an example today, working on how do we have study halls to make sure that all the education is done. Uh, Richard Gallant is just finishing up the schedule for the games and the practices. We're then now taking a look at off-ice activities, video time, gym time. We want to have some fun down there, some creative stuff. So we might there there might be a, a basketball tournament or a tennis tournament or a golf tournament. We want to keep the kids active um, so that, like I said, when they look back on this, it's the greatest thing that that's ever happened in their youth or junior hockey careers. So it's a lot every day. And it, you know, listen, just just the um, the food itself, right? How do you feed 600 people? I mean, so it's just, it, it's one thing after another, but the team's on it. It's going to be great. Well, I, I do have a quick thought that I wanted to share. And I love the, the consideration for the academic side. You know, we always push that this, this academic idea along with the athletics and as a, as a former teacher and a current academic tutor myself, I love the idea of there being these study hall sessions for players to come in to help each other out with work and to be in a focused environment to get work done. So absolutely hats off in that regard. Um, but commissioner, I, I, my question for you is you touched a little bit about, you know, some of the NHL comments and NCAA comments you've heard about the play on the ice. What kind of feedback have you gotten since the event sort of launched on usphl.com or the, the uh, event description from, you know, maybe parents, coaches, or even NCAA scouts. Have you gotten a lot of feedback from them? overwhelming joy i mean people just want to watch hockey i mean when you think about it for a second i mean you take a look at the leagues i mean the ontario hockey league isn't operating the quebec hockey league isn't operating operating the western league isn't a bunch of teams in the ncaa aren't the ushl is kind of and here we are uh just making it happen right finding a way to get it done in a safe environment um, so that our players can play competitive hockey, continue to get better as athletes and uh, as uh, as students. And uh, we're, I'm I'm proud of our team, led by Richard Gallant. I mean, I'm just super proud of what uh, we're going to be able to uh, pull off here. We thank you for joining us, Mr. Commissioner. I know you have a million things going on right now. There's so much hard work going on behind the scenes. I just want you parents and players and you know, prospective athletes down the road, these are the opportunities. You know, whenever we look at a product or we look at our future playing careers, we have to look at, at the best opportunities for us. And we want to be in places where the folks in charge care about, about us, about our experience, about our time, both on and off the ice. I mean, if, if this is, to me, one of the greatest things I've ever seen in a game of hockey, in a game of sport, uh, to watch the USPHL put this together – the, the largest league geographically in the country to figure out a hub city to play not just the game we all love, but do it safely and give players an opportunity that might not have had it anywhere else in the country, anywhere else in the world, a chance to hop on the ice and play day in and day out. Commissioner Bob Toro, we thank you. We thank Richard Gallant. We thank the entire league office, Josh Boyd, everybody there. I cannot imagine the work you are all going through right now to get this done. But again, thank you so much for all of it. Anything, guys. Thanks, thanks for the time. We're going to be back with coaches Jim Henkel and Dan Hodge, Coach Henkel of the Connecticut Junior Rangers and Coach Dan Hodge of the Twin City Thunder to talk a little bit about the situations they've been dealing with in their home states and what the Hub City will do for their athletes and organizations. You are watching the Dan K Show. Everything USPHL, from the NCDC to the Premier and Elite Leagues, the Dan K Show with Dan K and Lucas Jones. All right, hockey fans, we've had our opportunity with the commish. Bob Turo sat down with us. We talked a little bit about the hub, about the, the Tampa experience upcoming for the players. But now we want to get into the details of why this is such a good move by the league, who this, this hub experience helps the most. And with that, we bring in two of our favorite coaches across the landscape here, Dan Hodge of the Twin City Thunder and Jim. I win every all-star game and cause Dan to lose his own show once a year. Hankel, who is both going to join us here today to talk a little about their experiences so far in what has been a one of a kind 2020, 2021 campaign. And, and with that, we start with you, Dan, I'm going to, I'm going to go to the Twin City side first up in Maine, obviously, 
there are not a lot of NCDC sides to play in the state. And with these state border limitations, you guys have kind of been hamstrung at times in scheduling and getting games on the ice and, and getting and getting through this 2020 campaign. Can you talk a little about what you guys have been dealing with up there in Twin City? Yeah, it's definitely been uh, it's been definitely a year the, you don't want to repeat. That's for sure. You know, again, it's tough because you know the beginning of the season. You know, you, you're, you're thinking you're going to play some games, and then you get to Thursday, Friday, and then you hear that you can't travel to Mass or you can't travel to New Hampshire. And you know, I got to give my team credit though; they've all worked hard, and they've all kind of. You know, the biggest thing I think is the communication with the players. Like you say, hey, listen, this is a, a we may or may not play, and understand that it's, it's not, nothing to do with us. And it's you know we're we're just going following the guidelines. So one, at a certain point, the kids have been great about listening and and and, and buying in and understanding. And I, you know, it's funny Jim had mentioned early on not to not to make Jim feel too good about himself, but he he uh, he mentioned early on about his group and how he was going to make sure that they were there for the right reasons and. And uh, it was a league call we had early on and we kind of followed that guideline about, Hey, you know, you're here for a reason and, you know, we'll get the games in when we get them in. And, uh, you know, league has been very good with communication and, uh, you know, we've been trying to communicate with the players as much as possible. And now Jim, we go to your side of it. I mean, just a few months back, we're out there maybe a month and a half into the 2020 campaign. And we got a chance to call one of your guys' games as one of our free games of the week before new lockdown rules came into play. And that was a situation you were already dealing with the idea of long breaks between matchups. I mean, can you talk about kind of what you guys were dealing with there, not just with with restrictions and regulations, but just with the the schedule in itself, trying to get games in play? Uh, Yeah, I mean, it's December 15th, and we've played seven hockey games. Um, You're you're talking – you know, we, we've been going since September 15th. So talk about, you know, three months, 12 weeks, and you play seven hockey games. Um, you know, it's been very difficult. Uh, not anything we've ever seen. Uh, and every time we thought we had uh, a situation set up where it would benefit ourselves, something would happen, uh, which was, you know, frustrating. But, um, you know, at the end of the day, it was we had it. Uh, and then it was, you know, our opponent that we were supposed to play one weekend had it. And then, uh, the following weekend, it was another opponent that had it then, uh, okay, we're going to, you know, we're going to limit, you can't have games in, uh, state. Right. So then, you know, we were supposed to play, you know, a team like Utica or Powell, uh, in our building, but it was going to be their home game. No nope, teams from the outside the state can't come in. Uh, it's been, it's been one stop start stop start after another um you know my guys are frustrated they just want to play hockey games uh they're super excited for uh this scenario down in tampa um you know when i told them hey you're looking at 22 23 games in 45 days they were like let's go um we're, we're tired of practicing we're, we're tired of beating each other up uh and they just want to play uh but it's it's been one uh, issue after the next, like like Dan was saying, like we've got guys here that are for the right reasons, but uh, the frustration level for our group has definitely set in. Um, you know, seven games in, in three months is uh, it's you know it's basically a game every other week, and you know you talk about uh, the next level with college playing two games a week uh, and how much less it is than what we play at the junior level. Um, you know, these kids are playing if they're lucky one game a week and. Um, you know, it's frustrating, but you know, at the end of the day, there, there's what appears to be light at the end of the tunnel for this group and, uh, six, seven weeks down in a great environment. Um, you know, the, I know that the staff that's working diligently on it, uh, is working to cross every T and dot every I. So no stone gets left unturned on ice, off the ice at the resort uh, and the surrounding areas. So. Yeah, and uh, me and Lucas, we heard Tampa. We said, you know what? Twist our arms. We'll go down as long as you need us to. I I bet. As many games (laughs) as you need. If we got to go knock some golf balls around, if you guys want to be on the the golf course podcast, you can let us know. We're going to be doing a little 2v2 with some of the coaches down there. Yeah, I think think one of the things that – we've heard is, is absolutely everyone's excited and they should be. This is a once in a lifetime. It's taking a once in a lifetime negative, potentially turning it into a once in a lifetime positive experience for some of these players. But there's also from coaches, players, and staff, this idea of 
we're all going for one purpose and we all know what that purpose is it's to play the best hockey that we can over those 44 days. So I think it's a, it's really is a singular mindset for a lot of the players and teams in this league. Um, I do want to talk a little bit about the logistics of this from a team perspective. We talked with commissioner Turo about the logistics and the planning from a league perspective. Uh, Coach Hodge, I want to start with you here. What does it look like for, for your team to get down to the hub city? Um, have you started the, the plans yet for how you're going to operate on a day-to-day basis? Well, uh, you know, again, I think it's more or less we're, 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 we're we've we've booked our way down. That's that's pretty much where we're at right now. And I think it's going to come down to what the what the daily when the league when the league announces the daily schedule, we'll kind of start putting the start putting things together and, and, and deciding on what's going to be a daily thing. And you know, again, the, we talk about the mental health. We also talk about the physical health of these kids. Like you know, this COVID is not a joke, and they got to realize that yeah, they're going down to Florida, but you got to also be healthy off the ice as well and do the right thing because, you know, you hear all the, the problem is the lack of information about it is so, so frustrating, but, you know, we got to make sure that the kids are being healthy and not, you know, and, and you know, and, and, the, and the coaches are being healthy and everybody's in, in the right mindset. Cause I think you saw, everyone saw the NHL bubble go so well and that it was such a, it was, everything was so organized that of course we want to have that organized. Cause I've been telling the players, Realize this, once you go down there and this, this whole thing starts, you're going to be under a spotlight because everybody is talking about this and you're going to have all eyes on you in the, in, in the college hockey world. Like everybody's going to be watching. So, you know, for us, it's going to be the structure of when the schedule gets put out, what's our practice schedule look like? How are we going to get our online kids to take their classes? You know, the, the league has thought of all this. So once that it gets announced, then we'll be able to start plugging things away. But the travel, we got the travel up and back. It's just a matter of what we do while we're there. Yeah, and uh, Coach Ankle, similar question to you, but I also want to tack on, um, you know, not just the logistics of, of getting the team and how you're going to operate down there. Do you do you expect that these teams will will have to take a couple of days or a week to flip the mental switch on this new situation? Uh, I don't, I don't necessarily think it's going to be the mental switch right away. I think the mental switch is going to be after day 11. Uh, and the reason I say that is this is, you know, there's going to be super excitement to get down there. Uh, sure. There's going to be some rustiness with coming off of, of the Christmas break. Uh, but there's going to be super excitement to be down there. So the, the kids are going to be all amped up, uh, and, and, you know, the adrenaline will be flowing to be doing what they need to do. And when, when things go off, um, you know, you, you get your five, six days in, all right, and then you take that kind of first gasp of air, uh, and it's like, okay, we're, you know, we're on the ice for practice. We're in the gym. Uh, what do we got next? Well, like Haji and I have been talking about, there's going to be a daily schedule. Kids are going to have to report to certain areas to do their schoolwork. Those that are still in school, kids are going to have, uh, you know, curfews that they have to abide by. Uh, and this is all in an effort to keep everybody safe and healthy uh, mentally and physically. Uh, but I'm thinking day 11 is a day that's really going to kind of get into it because the excitement of getting down there is going to get you through the first week. Then you start to kind of get a little run down and tired with a ton of stuff going on between the on ice, the off ice, uh, the travel in, uh, getting back into it, playing the games, uh, once you get through the first 10 days, that, that excitement and that adrenaline fades pretty quickly. Uh, and, then, and then it's the focus, the mental focus and the mental toughness that gets you through uh, the next, you know, 10 or so days. And you're halfway through and then it's, then it's gut check time. You know, can you make a push the last, you know, 15, 18 days and, and win some hockey games and put yourself in a good situation? Now I've got one more little bit of a, a lighter question uh, before I throw it back to Dan here. And we'll start with coach Hodge. You guys have the potentially the, the longest, uh, are you now, are you guys taking the, the team bus down to Florida? Oh no, no, we're flying. <laughs> I was going to say that's going to be a long, that would be a long, yeah, long time. Yeah, we start now. We also start now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. Uh, coach Hankel, what about you guys? Are you guys taking the bus down or flying? No, 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 no. We're uh, so what we're, uh, we, we've been, it's been a disaster here in Connecticut. Uh, so what we've done is uh, we've had multiple meetings with our players and basically said, Hey, listen, here's the deal. You're, you're scheduled to report uh, January 4th down in Florida. Uh, we've already let the housing 
uh, units know that we're not continuing up here. Um, they're aware. Uh, so kids will be starting to pack up and, and head back to their domain. Uh, they'll travel in on their own. Um, and I basically said, Hey, listen, you got to be in by the fourth. Like that's what we're looking for. Um, get in by the fourth. We'll be on the fifth and sixth. Uh, and then we start, you know, a care of five or six games in eight days and, um, be prepared. You know, a, a lot of kids are like, Oh, I'm going to go home. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. I'm like, you may want to get a lot of sleep when you're at home because while we're in the bubble, you are going to get run down pretty quickly. Mm -hmm. uh, keep in mind, you know, they're going to have friends on other teams that they're wanting to go hang out with. And oh, I haven't seen my buddy. I'm going to go by the pool with him. And the next thing you know, it's, it, it just, the hours will add up rather quickly. Uh, but their, their travel in is on their own. Um, I heard Utica is taking a bus from Utica <laughs> down. So uh, <laughs> that could be an interesting trip. Uh, yeah. with, with those a Kelly trip. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Yes. yes. <laughs> Paul Kelly taking the bus. That he's, oh, I don't, I don't think, I don't think Paul's, Paul's not taking the bus. <laughs> Paul's not taking the bus. You think Paul, Paul's above the bus? Is that what yeah. we're saying? Oh, yeah, Paul's gonna Paul's gonna fly, and Nicole's gonna drive down with the kids if he yeah. if he has his way. I absolutely love it. See, this is what we talk about: fans watching at home. It, it's it's the idea in the USPHL and the NCDC. These everybody works together, right? It, it's it, every boat is floating at the same level here, and if it's not, it's working together to ensure it does. And you see the camaraderie, you see the teamwork. There was chirping going on before this podcast started. There's chirping going on now. Make sure to follow along with the Tampa Hub. It is going to be one of a kind. It is going to be must see hockey, and it's going to be the game in town. Make sure to follow along usphl.com to see that schedule release. Tampa Hub City, hashtag Tampa Hub. Let us know who you think is going to reign supreme in the Tampa Hub because it might just be Lucas and I. We're going to be rocking a beautiful tan. Uh, we're going to be out by the pool, you know, hanging out. But also, again, remind you all, stay safe, stay healthy.